drivers are your tools and at the minute it's getting harder and harder to find them and it's just causing us chaos. There's going to be a major food shortage. Uh, it's been a nightmare to get drivers, you just can't. There just seems to be nobody around and drivers are your tools and at the minute it's getting harder and harder to find them um, and it's just causing us chaos. It's had a massive impact, we've had a lot of our um, European drivers actually go back um, just due to paperwork and you know it's just a lot easier to um, go back to their countries. We've had Spain, Portuguese and a Czech Republic driver just you know just go back home it's easier for them paperwork wise and it's just causing chaos you know our customers are our priority and we work with the supermarket so definitely without a doubt we're gonna have a major shortage um, already our customers are struggling to get some products in um, from suppliers you know Warburton stuff like that um, to dispatch out to the supermarkets I just think it's only gonna get worse that there's going to be a major food shortage. Well, I passed my test when I was 21. I was lucky, I managed to keep going all through COVID. And from a driver's point of view, the lockdown was lovely. There was no traffic on the roads. And pre-Brexit, when a trailer came off the the ferry, we could pick it up and go straight away. Now it has to come off the ferry, then await customs clearance. And I've been sat around for two or three hours waiting for them to clear customs. And some of my colleagues have lost a whole day waiting for a trailer to clear customs before they can leave the quay. And as an owner driver, I've put another vehicle on the road, but I can't find a driver for it, so I'm staying at one vehicle. The ferry operator I work for, they're crying out for haulers all the time now. They just cannot find people to, to pull the trailers because people are struggling for drivers. I've got a son now who's 22 and I'm discouraging him from coming into this industry. You see, he wants to take over from myself and I've told him I don't think it's the thing to do at the moment. There's not a lot of future in it. So the government have suggested today that they extend the driver's hours or relax the driver's hours. Um, so they can work longer shifts, which I just don't think that's going to be a solution at all. You're driving a 44 ton um, vehicle with a lot of responsibility that, you know, if you're tired or whatever, it's a big vehicle that you can cause major issues with. It's not the solution. So we're the representative membership organisation for companies that store and move temperature controlled food and other goods in the United Kingdom. We spend so much of our time, our government relations activity and whatever else, on immediate crisis uh, issues around, around Brexit and Covid in particular, but particularly Brexit. And so I, think that, I don't think I really would have thought two years ago that we would be spending so much of our time on that. The number of people that are non-UK nationals that we relied on in our food supply chain and have left the, the, the UK, we don't know if they're coming back. And actually the reality of Brexit is it's going to be much more difficult to come back than it was um, when we were a member of the European Union. I don't think anybody expected the food supply chain to be under the stress it is because of Brexit. And we're going to see sort of intermittent shortages. The portrayal of things in the 15, 16 was that it would be a very smooth and very easy thing to do to exit the European Union. We never thought it would be, and as it turns out, it really wasn't. I think businesses across the supply chain are frustrated that there does, the, the evidence is now there hasn't been a really clear plan for how to maintain supplies and support businesses through what's been a chaotic exit of the UK from the European Union. We, we estimate around 30,000 drivers are needed right now to fulfil the needs we have um, to, to get product back into our, into our restaurants and, uh, and cafes that are reopening as a result of after the lockdown, but also to keep food going onto our shelves. Um, so we're really seeing that shortage sort of really quite acutely uh, um, in those places. There's been a lot of issues since Brexit of we had a deal, and, but of course what everybody didn't realise, the deal came along with an extensive amount of paperwork and an awful lot of issues, particularly with foodstuffs. Nobody, even the government, didn't understand fully the costs involved in exporting and importing to and from Europe. 
and that's the biggest issue. I don't think anybody had the understanding of what's, what's actually reality we're in today. And unfortunately, it's not going to change in the near future. I mean, we're still looking at delays and added cost for UK industry as a whole, not just the logistics industry, but UK manufacturing and UK foodstuffs. So we've got that problem and it's ongoing. I think it's a lot worse than the government envisages it's going to be. I think they didn't understand their own regulations. Thanks for watching. We can only hold power to account with your support. So do support us if you can by joining up on YouTube, Patreon or through the Byline Times website.